this question as it's presented to you, some of you actually, who's done this? Some of you might have actually done this because you, I didn't assign it, but some of you, well, yeah, okay, you might recognize it, that's okay. Uh, this is out of, this is in your textbook. Um, this is a, a single part question in some ways, but the question is trying to sort of hold your hand through it, the textbook rather, it's trying to hold your hand. So they break the question apart into three parts, okay? Now I'm not going to tell you what the parts are, I'm just going to walk through them, and then I'm going to show you the three parts after the fact, so that you can see, oh, this is how you get guided, sort of, you know, it's almost like a, um, like a wizard for setting up your email, like they, they walk you through step by step, okay? And the question very simply is, you have a, um, you have a cone, okay, and it's, it's a cone of, it's fixed in size, okay? Now you don't have any numbers, which is part of what makes this question challenging, which is why I'm picking it out as an example. But these could be, you know, say for example, it could be a cone of radius 10 centimeters and height 20 centimeters, okay? So you often do get numbers for this, but the fact that there aren't numbers, that they're protein rules, is part of the challenge of this question. I'm going to equip you to deal with this. So then, within this fixed cone, I've drawn it in blue, and like I said, you know, Colors are a superpower, okay? I've got a cylinder which can be different sizes, right? So long as it's inscribed, I'm trying to fit a big cylinder inside my fixed cone, okay? And you can quickly see, and maybe you want to draw this off on the side, right? Just like we had all our different versions of our open box that you guys folded in beautiful colorful cardboard, right? There are different versions of this cylinder that exist, right? Of different kinds of dimensions. So draw off on the side of your page, draw me a few cones, maybe, maybe three cones, okay? So you have to, for us, we have to draw a cylinder to fit it. No, you don't. No, you don't. I'll, I'll show you how I've drawn my... So you've got all your cones, okay? Now here's the way, by the way, if you're like, I'm not very good at drawing cylinders and cones. It's not that hard, right? Where it starts with is, well, okay, how big am I going to make my cylinder? Now, for example, you can see I've drawn kind of like a medium cylinder here where it's uh, base, it's diameter, and it's higher, roughly the same. But I could have a really, really fat cylinder, something like this. So draw the base of that cylinder, right? And once you've drawn the base, how big can it possibly get, okay? It's limited by how wide it is, right? So if you just take the edges of the cylinder and draw them down to wherever they hit the cone, like that, okay? It can't go any further because the cone is of fixed size, right? So that's, you jam it in and that's as far as it goes. And then you draw the bottom of your cylinder, right? So there you go. There's, there's not a very big, obviously it could be completely flat, right? So that's what with very, very large radius. I could have one where it's a bit, you know, a smaller radius, okay? Something like this. So I make it more in between. And then you can see I can draw my height down further because it's thinner. That makes sense. It goes further into the cone, but the whole thing is actually not as wide. And that's why it can fit in, right? And then there's an extreme, which is to make a very, very thin cylinder of very small radius, something like this. And because it's so thin, it can go further into the cone, right? So you're going to draw down your, um, draw down your height here. And it's going to land pretty close to the bottom. You see that? So these are kinds of what I'm imagining in my mind for the different versions of this cylinder that exist within the cone. And what I want to know is which one is the biggest. Right on cue. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. Do you want to come back to me to grab some? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've briefed them, so. Okay. Can I start with Elizabeth? Is she here? Do you want to grab. Oh, you want to grab one at a time? I Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only going to be like three, four. Yeah, it's five, fine. Five, but yeah. Short conversation, so it's not It's fine. Good. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of Do you want to just get the knowledge? Thanks. Yeah, just close it. Okay, so. Here's the setup, right? Here's the setup. Now, how are we going to approach this? Uh, and what I'm doing, by not giving you the individual parts of the question, I'm giving it to you in its hardest form, right? It's like you need to go from A all the way to Z and work out all the parts in the middle, okay? So, I want to know what's the volume of the biggest cylinder that I can fit in there? That's the question, okay? So, if you want to know the volume, well, what kinds of, like trying to reverse engineer this, go think backwards, what kinds of things are you going to need to know to get the volume? Radius. Yes. Okay. We're gonna. Well, we're gonna need. Um, we're gonna need two dimensions, aren't we, to actually work this? Um, because it's a three D shape and it's got a radius and a height. height. Okay. So you're gonna need to know which radius or height is gonna give you the um the maximum size, right? So before this question, I need to know which radius, which height. Yes. Do you see that? 
Okay, now before that, climb back, because I've stated this as, oh look, you've got two variables. You don't really have two variables, do you? Remember as we were drawing our cylinders, this is actually a crucial step, it's why I asked you to actually do it on paper before, but you can't do, always do it on paper. As soon as I've determined my radius, right? Like, oh, it's really, really fat. Oh, it's kind of in the middle. No, it's really thin. As soon as you know the radius, you already know the height. Do you see that? Like the radius kind of defines the height, right? That's right, so you have two variables, one which depends on the other, okay? So really, it's one or the other, right? Do you want radius or do you want height? You pick one, and then we'll go from there. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to have to pick one of these, okay? Now, it's not just because like I said, they do relate to each other that I want to pick one. What's my actual mathematical reason for why I only want to work with one of them? Because when I differentiate, right, I'm going to differentiate with respect to one variable. Like I'm either going to differentiate with respect to R or I'm going to differentiate with respect to H. And I can't do both, okay, unless I go to <coughs> university and do partial differential equations uh, at university, which you don't want to get to just yet, okay, even if you do want to get to. So therefore, I've got to pick a variable, right? That means I've got to do one more thing, okay? If I'm going to differentiate something with respect to R or with respect to H, what am I differentiating? I'm, I'm going to have to differentiate the volume, right? Which means I need the volume in terms of one of these variables, right? Which I don't have at the moment, okay? So now I've climbed all the way back up, right? I need to know the volume of this thing in terms of one of the variables, okay? And then I'm going to take that, I'm going to differentiate, and find, hopefully, a maximum, right? Then I can use that and actually work out the volume. Does that make sense? Do you see how I've mapped out my path in here? Okay? All right, let's begin. So, firstly, I want to say volume equals, and I'm dealing with this blue one in here, okay? So to help you, before I, um, actually, no, we'll just write this quickly down. What is the volume of that cylinder? Pi r squared h. Just pi r squared h, right? That's just, um... That's just a statement of the form, okay? Now, before I go any further, I'm just very wary of the fact that I mentioned this before, that I've got so many pronumals flying around. This is a trap. Okay. Who next to us? It's Jack. Yep. It is Jack, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, here's what you need to do to avoid the trap, right? People will get confused here. You know how we said all of this stuff here. People will get confused about what they're functions are in relation to, what variable they are, and therefore what they're differentiating with respect to, it's very, very confusing. There are four printed rules here, right? Four printed rules. Two can change and two can't. Two can change and two can't. In other words, two of them are variables and two of them are constants. Right? Two of the numbers can change and two can't, right? And remember, I, I kept saying at the beginning what was the setup, right? And I even tried to do them in different colors so you could see. The cone, is fixed, it stays put. It's like an ice cream cone, it's like, well, what can I put in here? And I can't just, I wish I could make it bigger, but that's just the size of the cone. You okay? have to pay more then. Right. <laughs> so, so therefore, my constants are the dimensions of the cone, which are, which radius and which height? It's the lower case, right? R and H, lower case, okay? I've got two variables. They are the capitals, right? They're the dimensions of the cylinder. Now. This, it's pretty easy, it's like, oh, I've got big ones, and I've got little ones, and I can distinguish them, okay? You often won't get that. You'll get like, um, you know, say theta in here, and then you'll get x, a, b, and p, okay? And you're like, how do I, how do I remember which one's which? Or well, this will be called something even more confusing, which mixes in with the rest, okay? So this step here is crucially helpful, so you know what you're talking about. And the number of times I've seen someone say, do differentiate volume with respect to, say, in this question, say that, right? It's like, but that's a number. That's like, say, five. It's like, I'm going to differentiate with respect to five. How's five ch Wait, five's not changing, okay? So this doesn't work. And that's one of the ways I know a student doesn't understand the question, right? They haven't identified what's actually changing. Okay, now, I'm getting to that. I will need to eliminate one of these out, as you can see, so that I can differentiate. But I'm not quite there yet, right? So you're, in fact, about to do my next step. The fact is, though, h is variable. It changes, does it not? Like you even saw, it changes, okay? So I do have to list it out over here. Uh, it's not a constant. 